Om Shanti and welcome back to the third of July's Godly Blessing where Supreme Godfather wants us to become soul conscious so that the sorrow which we feel in our life on a daily basis goes away and leaves us forever. So let's see, let's understand what does God have to say over here. God in the heading says, May you be a constant bestower of happiness. That means we become somebody who is giving others happiness. And finish all name and trace of sorrow with your soul conscious attitude and vision and the explanation is like this the world of brahmins the world of brahmins means the world of children of brahma brahma means adam is unique and their vision and attitude are unique just as it is mentioned in some of the scriptures that god created adam first that means god created adam in his own eyes so god's eye means the third eye and he created Adam in a soul conscious manner. He gave Adam all the knowledge about being soul conscious. That's why Adam was God conscious and soul conscious. Those who have a soul conscious attitude and vision, those who have a soul conscious attitude and vision as they move along cannot have any name or trace of sorrow come to them. Think about it for a minute. If you consider yourself to be a soul, then all the impure thoughts of distinctions of greed, religion, caste, color, height or anything which pertains to this physical body goes away. Your comparison with others also goes away. You won't compete with others on the basis of your physicality because you are more soul conscious. And since you understand that supreme soul or the supreme creator is also a bodiless being then supreme soul gets all the name and the fame in the world not because supreme creator or god is physically beautiful it's not because he's physically wealthy it's not because he has a fair skin or a or a beautiful body but supreme creator is getting the complete praise for the values for the virtues for the different habits and the powers which he has but what it does to us is we either connect to him on a soul conscious basis or we connect to supreme creator on a body conscious basis but when we are body conscious the complete consciousness goes on to our physical aspects and that's where we tend to compare ourselves with others we tend to get into a cow web and get entangled into the thoughts of what about me physically? Whereas we should be thinking, what about me spiritually? So here God says that the sorrow comes to them who think of themselves as physical bodies. It's just a thought away. Happiness is just one thought away. When you are soul conscious, you remain happy. You've got nothing to compete with anybody. You're a pure being. You just spark in you this physical body and your thoughts matter more than what you are physical. This is because there is sorrow when there is body consciousness. If you forget body consciousness and are an embodiment of soul consciousness, you have happiness and only happiness. If you think for a moment, God is looking at you on a physical basis or on a spiritual basis. If you can answer this question, then you'll understand that you need to look at yourself in which fundamental basis either on a physical or a spiritual basis it doesn't matter how people look at you but how you look at yourself and how God looks at you is what matters there's a permanent you and there's a temporary you God is looking at the permanent you and not at the temporary you what are you looking at ask yourself this question and you shall find out whether it's body consciousness which you're looking at or soul consciousness then God says if you forget body consciousness and are an embodiment of soul consciousness you have happiness and only happiness because your thoughts are pure towards yourself first and then your thoughts are pure towards others you don't compare yourself don't compete on any physical basis with others you only look at the good in others irrespective of how they look physically or which caste which language which culture do they belong to and that's why your thoughts are reduced wasteful impure thoughts and you become more over a more happier and a peaceful person your life is full of happiness and becomes a life of giving happiness 
So let's say you compare with somebody. You want something better today or you are looking better today. And the other person looks at you and you are comparing physical glances. The other person feels a little lesser than you because you're looking better. Have you given that person happiness or have you given that person sorrow? So if you are soul conscious and you're not portraying yourself on a physical basis of how much you earn, how you look, how much of wealth do you have, and if you don't talk on those bases or you don't relate to other people on those bases, you're actually giving them happiness. You're giving them more of what you actually are instead of the superficial you. And that is the only mode of happiness which God says you can give to others. So it's all about giving happiness and getting happiness. Your life is full of happiness and becomes a life of giving happiness. You constantly sleep on a bed of happiness. Since we have pure thoughts, since we have lighter thoughts about ourselves, body is heavy. Body consciousness thoughts are heavier. Soul is lighter. It doesn't have any physical weight. And soul conscious thoughts, that's why, are much more lighter. So you constantly sleep on a bed of happiness and are always an embodiment of happiness. Now the time has come to choose. How long do you take to choose between body consciousness and soul consciousness depends upon you. Happiness is waiting at the end of the corner. It depends upon your choice. And to make this choice more wiser, more clearer, you can come and learn the body conscious knowledge and the soul conscious knowledge at Brahma Kumaris and differentiate and find out the best. With this, Om Shanti.